If you haven't already seen a basic rundown of her abilities, here they are. Feel free to pause the video before we get into the advanced section. And as you can see here, she is a recon character, meaning she can scan beacons, which is huge and ranked. All right, so first let's take a look at her passive, specifically on the three times. If we ADS, there's going to be a few bits of important information. First, we've got the name, distance, the box around the character, you have a bullet drop indicator, which is in the middle. It's a little bit harder to see. And then when you're in game, there's a few other bits of information, such as right below the dummy, it's going to show what shield the enemy that you're looking at has. And on top of that, what the shields are of everyone remaining on their team. This is where the first important bit of information comes in. The amount of shields total is going to let you know if this person is truly a rat or if they have teammates nearby. This will help you avoid those awkward situations where you see someone, you end up chasing them down thinking they're a rat just to be lured right back to their team. It'll tell you the legend you're aiming at, which is super important and you need to communicate this to your team is you're going to know what abilities you're going to be going against. Say we're looking at a Gibraltar, we'll know that they have a dome and they have an airstrike. While you can gather that kind of information with any character having the name listed there is kind of a foolproof way as there are some characters or skins that look similar to each other and it's super important to know the exact three legends that you're going against specifically in ranked say you're going against a gibraltar bangalore and seer and then all of a sudden you scan an octane okay the octane wasn't part of the first team so that's a third party also when you're in game and you ping an enemy it's going to register some information to your team through voice comms like the color of the enemy shield all right so the bullet indicator is super simple one thing to keep in mind is it's only going to move on your screen when you're looking at a target that's far away that the bullet drop actually matters. As you can see here, as we get farther away, it slowly moves down. This makes using scout rifles, snipers, any type of weapon that can use a three times sight or higher, extremely foolproof to hit standing assault targets. Obviously, if the target's moving, you have to take into consideration the side to side movement as well, but this takes one step out of the equation. But make sure you're not sleeping on this ability when it comes to assault rifles. This bullet drop indicator makes flatline recoil control at distance so much more simple because it gives you that starting point. Now you just have to control the weapon. On top of that, you're going to get that tiny little box around the enemy, which also helps you center and frame your enemy with the dot in combination for easy recoil control and tracking. This is one reason that I recommend not only using snipers and marksman rifles on Vantage. While it seems like her kit perfectly fits those type of weapons, I personally felt like an absolute demon when using the flatline with a three times on Vantage, but we'll talk about her best loadout a little bit later on. The next thing to keep in mind is part of her passive does work on the two times. However, as you can see here, the bullet drop indicator does not. If you want the bullet bullet drop indicator, which I highly recommend you do, you need to be using a three times and up. This means that you won't be able to use the bullet drop indicator on weapons like the wingman, which honestly would be absolutely broken. I know a lot of people struggle with the three times versus the two times. So what I recommend, whether you're on mouse and keyboard or controller, is going into your per optics and adjusting your three times slightly upwards. By moving your sensitivity on only your three times or your two times up, it's going to make it feel a lot more natural. Because if you didn't know, every sight in Apex actually has a negative sensitivity multiplier on it, which makes the sights feel slow lower because if they all maintain the same sensitivity from your one times to your 10 times, your 10 times, your six times, all of those would feel way too fast. This negative multiplier is a good thing for accuracy, but when it comes to controlling recoil or automatic weapons on a three times, sometimes it can feel a little bit slow and clunky. I'd recommend trying anything between a 1.2 to say like a 1.5, but it's all personal. And for you odd ducklings that enjoy the one by two, she actually does not have her passive even if you zoom into the two times. However, if you're using a two by four, even if you're on the two times, you do get the bullet drop indicator. You still can't use this on guns like the wingman, but if you absolutely refuse to use the three times, using the two by four and keeping it on the two times allows you to have the bullet drop indicator on a two times. So say you're rotating around, you're looking for a place to go, you see an enemy out of the corner of your eye, but you don't have a good sight. You can actually zoom in without a weapon to get the equivalent of a three times. Obviously you can't shoot any bullets, but this zoom will allow you to scan the enemies in the distance or just scope out if an area is safe or not without having to have a sight on your weapon. Oh yeah, and there's one other way that her passive actually works differently depending on which sight you're using. If you're using a two times, her passive is going to be limited at 175 meters. With a three times it's 200 meters, with a four times it's 250 meters, and lastly an eight times with up to 450 meters. And to close out her passive, here's a pro tip that I use myself almost every single game that I played as Vantage. All right, so we all know that Apex Legends has a ton of visual clutter. When I say this, I specifically mean like bushes and trees on King's Canyon. There's certain areas of the map that are almost impossible to track someone in, because the instant that they go into them, you can't see anything. And specifically for people like me, I'm partially red green colorblind, it makes it even harder. This is where this box comes in clutch. If I'm fighting an enemy and they run into a bush or they go anywhere that I can still shoot them, I just can't see them, this box is going to maintain on them. And if you can memorize where a headshot's going to be when this box is illuminated, as you can see here, it's lined up right with this top bar. 
you almost have infinite wall hacks for all that visual clutter. Next, we have her tactical echo, or as my buddy Tony would call him, Morbius. First of all, no, Morbius cannot be killed by you or the enemies, but that doesn't mean you should always leave him out of his Pokeball like Pikachu. All right, so echo can be thrown out up to 40 meters, but that's not the limitation of how far he can go. You can actually place echo out and then back up for a little bit over 50 meters before he starts to follow you. Using this can maximize the full distance that echo can travel. There's two different ways that you can get to echo. First of all, as you can see here, he's already out, we now hold the tactical and we'll jump all the way to him. However, there's a much more effective way. If you have Echo holstered and you simply hold your tactical from the start, you'll actually start priming that charge as Echo is flying to his destination. Overall, I like the second option a lot more in the heat of battle as you don't have to worry about repositioning Echo and you can go exactly where you want to in just a snap of the fingers. As you can see, Echo has an indicator around him. If it's blue, it means that it's ready to teleport to. But if I go behind cover, it's going to turn red and that means that it's ready for teleport, but you don't have line of sight, meaning if I try to use the tactical, it's not going to allow me to go to them. The third color is orange, which is only going to show up when it's still on cooldown. So the instant you see this turn blue, know that it's ready. Do not underestimate this line of sight thing, is I got killed a bunch of times because I accidentally went behind line of sight as my tactical activated. One thing that you can do is activate your tactical behind cover and right before it fully charges peak to where it's blue right when the tactical goes off. One of the biggest tips I can give about Echo is always calling him back after you use him. This can be done by going into your settings on your keybinds on your controller or mouse and keyboard and finding the keybind that's assigned to character utility action as you can see right here. For me it's five, but this is largely personal. And I repeat, you all always want to call back Echo directly after teleporting. There's nothing worse than forgetting to call back Echo, getting in a bad situation, and holding your tactical trying to get out of that just to find out that Echo is 50 meters behind you in the opposite direction. I'm so dead! Bad! Go! Go! Please! It's so much easier to always have him holstered and then just hold the tactical when you need it, throw him out, and instantly jump to him. I briefly mentioned this before, but you can throw Echo out to 40 meters, and then if you forget to holster him and run away, he will follow you around and try to maintain about a 50 meter distance, as seen here. There may be some unique ways that you can maximize this. However, I don't recommend having him follow you around the map, as it's a giant red flag to enemy teams that your team is nearby. All right, so when you throw out Echo, there's three different things that you can do. First of all is do nothing. You'll land here and then you'll hover in the air for a second and it'll take a while for your weapon to come out like so. This is the worst option and you never wanna do this. It's always better to use one of the following two options. First, we've got double jumping. As you can see here, when we approach the bat, we're going to be allowed to hit a second jump, which gets you another 20 meters or so and can be led into a tap strafe or bunny hop or any other type of movement. The double jump is helpful and can be chained into a lot of movements, but I still don't see it as the best option because it takes a second for your gun to come out. For me, the best possible option is actually holding crouch at any point during the jump. Angle. As you can see here, your weapon comes out quickly, you get to slide out of it, and you have a lot more control. With the double jump, you have to wait till you're right about here with the bat to be able to hit a second jump. But with the crouch, you can hit it at any point during the jump. This has a lot of potential for mastering when it comes to taking height, as you can time your jump to land in perfect positions of power. And overall, it just gives you more control over your destination. An important side note, I did mention that Echo can go 40 meters. This is not just horizontal, but vertical as well. If you really guy. want to, you can throw him directly 40 meters up into the air and then jump to him, going for insane height. This. this could lead to some interesting trick shots, or just use it to get away from, say, a Gibraltar airstrike or a Bangalore airstrike. Obviously, you're going to be a large target, but hey, you guys might find a useful use for it. One of my favorite defensive uses for Echo is say an enemy team is chasing me and there's a balloon ahead or a zip line, you can throw Echo towards the zip line and then jump to him using the double jump to reach the zip line and skip all of that distance where you would have been an easy target going up the balloon or zip line. One other thing to keep in mind when it comes to zip lines is you can't teleport to Echo when attached to a zip line, so simply jump off and then activate the jump to regain height. And then you could double tap right back into the zip. I'm about to show you a pro tip for Echo that I haven't seen anyone else mention. So if you haven't seen this before and you find it interesting, make sure you drop a like. All right, so I mentioned the 40 meters of vertical distance. You can use this vertical in combination with a ledge to bamboozle enemies. Say there's an enemy over here chasing us. Right before we jump off the ledge, throw Echo straight up in the air and then activate your teleport as you're jumping off the ledge. Since Echo will follow you up to 50 meters, this will slingshot you back up in the air up to 50 meters while the enemy is falling down right off with you. Finally, we have her ultimate, which is her sniper rifle. So chat, the reason I'm keeping my crosshair right here is because if you have your crosshair on the side, they can't see the laser. See the instant we shoot, hide. Do not let the laser lay out there. 
You're giving away information when you can't even shoot. You should basically view it as your third weapon and then model your loadout around having that sniper. Having this third weapon is actually the reason I recommend staying away from sniper rifles on Vantage and trying not to pigeonhole yourself into only using longer range weapons like the G7 or 3030. Personally, my highest recommendation when it comes to loadouts for her is using the flatline with a three times and then an alternator for your secondary weapon. This loadout means that you can have medium to long range with your sniper, medium range to close range with your assault rifle, and then have your alternator for your secondary and your backup weapon. Weapon, and most importantly for close range combat. Although the flatline really doesn't have bad hit fire even after the nerf. I may regret telling you controller players this, but hey, you stuck around, so screw it. If you've been watching my content for a while, you know that all sniper sites above a four times have no aim assist. That includes the Kraber. Well, for some reason, they may have left the aim assist on on Vanja's sniper rifle, giving her the only sniper rifle in the game with aim assist, making her extremely strong on controller. Please don't use this against me. While her sniper has extremely low bullet drop, it's not hit scan. On top of that, you can use a bullet drop indicator, but make sure if there is a decent amount of distance between you and the enemy, you do lead them if they're running side to side. But overall, it's a lot easier to hit than any of the other snipers in the game. As you can see down below, each bullet respawns one at a time, taking 40 seconds per bullet. If maintained correctly, this means that you almost always have ammo for your sniper rifle. It's not like Rampart Sheila where you have to use all of it or lose it. You can pull out the sniper, take a shot, quickly put it away, and then you maintain all of the ammo that you still had and it continues to refill as you run around. As for damage, the sniper does 50 damage to the body, 75 to the head. However, if you land a second shot directly after, it's going to do double damage. That's where, it, oh, right, right in front of us. Wait, one second. I did. Hit both of them. Got her, 140. This is insanely powerful and can allow for two shot hits on basically every type of armor, up to 150 damage on a headshot. On top of that, anytime you hit an enemy, it's going to ping the enemy like this for your team for 10 seconds and give everyone on your team an additional 15 damage towards that enemy. However, the scan will not scan through walls. Oh yeah, and on top of the double damage on consecutive shots, it's going to restart that 10 second little scan on them that gives you the damage debuff. And while you do have basically unlimited ammo with the sniper, I highly recommend not taking shots when you only have one bullet, as you're not able to fully take advantage of that double shot potential for the stack damage boost. Also, you can tag up to five enemies with the sniper at a time, but I feel like that's not getting the true potential out of the sniper, and you should always instead just go for that second shot potential. Ultimate accelerants are actually super effective on her and will give you two bullets anytime you use one. One thing to keep in mind though, is if you do have any type of ammo, like we have two bullets right here, I'm not actually able to use the ultimate accelerant unless I go into my inventory and then click on it. However, if you have zero bullets, you can just hold your ultimate to start using the alt excel. You won't have to go into your inventory. And since her sniper is a three and an eight times, just like with the flatline, you can go into your per optic settings and adjust your eight times scope if her sniper feels a little bit sluggish. And I actually have two pro tips when it comes to her ultimate. So we find out with her passive that this enemy has a white shield, meaning that they have 150 damage to their health and shield combined. This is important because that means you don't have to risk a headshot. Instead, all you have to do is tap them to the body once, tap them to the body twice for 150 damage. If they have any armor above a white shield, you should always go for the headshot first because it's going to be easiest to hit them standing still, and then the body shot, which would kill up to a blue shield. Obviously, different helmet and shield combinations can change these calculations, but it's a good thing to keep in the back of your mind because if you do find someone in late game with a white shield, that means that you don't have to go for any headshots on them. Simply go for body shots and you can double tap them. And as for the second pro tip when it comes to a sniper rifle, that double damage multiplier carries to down enemies as long as you down them with your sniper rifle. This means that a body shot and a down enemy does 100 damage instantly thirsting them making this the single best weapon in the game for thirsting, especially at long distance. So if you have an extra bullet and you just down an enemy, immediately try to shoot them before their down shield comes up.